On December 12th, I left with my parents and siblings for a four-week vacation to Thailand. Months before, when my dad had first informed me that he had accrued enough miles to take our whole family to Thailand, I asked Pastor Gary and Pastor Mark if I could have four weeks to make the trip. They graciously allowed it, but they also said that if I wanted to, it would be great to get some footage of New Life Fellowship in Cambodia. So after three weeks of vacation and a small missions project in Thailand with my parents and siblings, I left my family behind and boarded the train for Bangkok and then hopped on a plane for Phnom Penh. A representative from New Life Fellowship picked me up and took me to my hotel. The first thing that greets you when you're on the ground is the traffic, but in all the chaos there is a weird sense of order. It's just the first of many reminders of how different this world is. On Saturday morning, I joined with another team that was visiting New Life Fellowship, which happened to be headed by a couple from Harrisburg. Together, we drove about an hour to some of the smaller villages just outside of Phnom Penh. There, I had the chance to interview several provincial pastors. I got to see their churches and houses, which were usually located right next to each other. I got to meet their families and see the simple means by which they live. Many pastors work other jobs to earn money, as many volunteer their time and resources towards their pastoral work. Most of the pastors raise some livestock to sell in the markets. You know, your chickens, your pigs, your crickets. Nothing like a tasty fried cricket to take the edge off. One of the pastors runs a guest house and uses much of the profits to support his church and several of the surrounding churches. The work that these pastors do and the sacrifices that they make in order to be able to continue to pastor was inspiring. The next morning, I got to experience a typical Sunday at New Life Fellowship. First, I joined the Children's Sunday School where over 100 kids were brought in trucks from all over the city to participate. Many are from the poorest areas of Phnom Penh. Each one is given a small breakfast and then participate in a great Sunday school service. After the service is over, they hop back into the trucks and head home. During second service, I joined the adults. And while first service is mostly Khmer people, second service was about half Khmer and half Caucasian. The service is held completely in Khmer and translated via headsets to English by an interpreter. Pastor Jesse delivered a powerful message about the Lord's favor in the new year. After the service was over, I got the opportunity to go to the dumps and experience the Joy Club outreach to the children there. ECF heavily supports the Joy Club, and the response I saw let me know that this is most definitely a worthwhile ministry. A service for the children was held and a Bible lesson was taught, and then the children were broken up into smaller groups and they got to talk with a leader from New Life Fellowship. After the service, each child received a small meal, but it wasn't hard to imagine that this may be the most substantial meal that they would receive all day. The amount of time, effort, and resources that go into the Joy Club outreach was truly astonishing. On Monday, Pastor Yah drove me out to visit ECF's sponsored village, Seha Village, in the Takao province. Once there, Pastor Shimron showed me around the property, the building, and introduced me to the family. Then he took me to meet some of the people of Seha Village. There I got to hear several testimonies of healing, restoration, and the conversion of a witch doctor. I treated Pastor Yah, Pastor Chimron, and his daughter to lunch, and then we returned to the church. That night, I got the opportunity to attend a Khmer wedding reception with Mara and Leah, as two of the prominent leaders of the church were married. The next day, on Tuesday morning, I went to the New Life School, which is about 15 minutes away from the church. New Life School teaches children from kindergarten through eighth grade, and currently has about 200 students. Some students pay to come to the school, while others are sponsored by the church and private sponsors. The children here were so fun and so full of life, and the principal and the administrators and the teachers at the school seemed to genuinely care about the kids. After finishing at the school and returning to the church, I got to interview several of the people that work in the New Life Outreach Office. Some are paid and some volunteer their time, and all work together to develop ways to establish strong churches and provinces throughout Cambodia. That evening, I got the chance to tour the dorms that are located near New Life that the church sponsors in order to give college-age students an affordable place to stay and an environment that will help build them up, keep them out of trouble, and encourage them to finish their education and grow closer to God. In the girls' dorm, five girls and one room leader stay in each small room. The leader has a bed and the other girls sleep on mats on the floor. The girls meet together each night to do homework and also to study the Bible together. The boys' dorm was similar, with many of the boys sleeping on mats on the floor, but despite these simple means, many of them expressed their gratitude at having a place to live and the opportunity to get an education. 
The next day, Wednesday, was my final day in Cambodia. Pastor Mara took me out to the new property that New Life has just purchased for the building of a new school and eventually a church building. Then that evening, it was time to hop on the plane back to Bangkok and then head back home. Then, only a week after I left Cambodia, Pastor Gary was able to join Pastor Jesse and the New Life Fellowship team for the groundbreaking ceremony at the new property. As a church, we gave $300,000 towards the $800,000 of the total cost of the new property. That is an amazing number and many people shared their thanks with me while I was there. Perhaps just as amazing is the fact that the congregation of New Life, many of them only earning $1 to $5 a day, was able to raise $90,000 towards the purchase on their own. This video is only a glimpse of all the work that God is doing through New Life Fellowship. I was absolutely blown away by all the different ministries and outreaches, all the education opportunities, and the aid that New Life is providing Cambodia. God is doing amazing things in Cambodia, and you as the members of ECF have played no small role in that success. Every life that is touched, every soul that is one for Christ, is in at least some small part helped by your support for missions like New Life and others all around the world. Mm -hmm.